The complexity class P stands for polynomial time. For convenience, I previously described it as the set of problems that can be solved in polynomial time, but it's actually the set of problems that can be decided in polynomial time. So why say one instead of the other? A decision problem is a question in which the answer is either yes or no. For example, you might ask if a number is prime, or if a list of movies is properly sorted. You can also take a generic problem, such as play this Mario level, and convert it into its decision variant. In this case, the question would be, can this Mario level be beat? So, the class of P includes all problems with yes or no answers that can be figured out in polynomial time. Formally, we can say that a decision problem is in P if and only if there is a polynomial time algorithm that returns 1 for all inputs that have a yes answer to the decision problem and returns 0 for all inputs that have a no answer. If a problem can be easily solved, then it can also be easily decided. This is because once we have a solution, we can fairly easily answer yes or no questions about the solution. For example, we have plenty of efficient solutions for sorting a list of items. Answering questions like, is the list sorted, or is the fourth element in the right position, are all easier than just sorting the list itself. But is the reverse true? If we can easily decide yes or no questions about the solution, can we easily search for the solution? The answer is usually yes. Let's recontextualize our understanding of NP-complete problems given our new definition of P. Take jigsaw puzzles. Let's pretend that we have an easy way to decide if a jigsaw puzzle is solvable or not. Remember that since we haven't figured out P versus NP, we don't know if this algorithm exists, but for the sake of this example, we'll pretend that it does. Now that we have this algorithm that will tell us if a jigsaw puzzle can be completed, we will use it to actually solve the puzzle through a technique called self-reducibility. Before we do anything, we'll ask our decider if we can solve the jigsaw puzzle. If it says we can't, we'll stop right there before proceeding any further. If we can, then we'll pick any arbitrary piece and place it down as the first piece in any random configuration. We then ask our decider again if it's still solvable. And if so, we continue plopping down random pieces. If the decider changes and says it's no longer solvable, we change the orientation of the piece and if necessary, try out a different piece. We keep going through until it's solvable again and repeat until the puzzle is completed. If it's solvable, this will let us narrow in on which pieces to use until we have a final solution. Let's do some simple big O analysis on our solver. Since we assume our decider runs in polynomial time, it would have a runtime of the form n to the k, where k is some number. It could be 0, 3, or a million, but it will be fixed. In the worst case, we'd have to go through all n pieces in all four rotations before we got to the correct piece, meaning we'd have to run the n to the k algorithm 4n times. Similarly, for the next piece, we would have to run the algorithm at most 4 times n minus 1 times. If we total the maximum amount of work the algorithm would take, we get this big expression. We can factor out the common terms to get the following. The sum from 1 to n is known as a triangle number and is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2, which I won't fully prove here. Simplifying all the math, we have 2 times n to the k plus 2 plus 2 times n to the k plus 1. This is still polynomial time and thus qualifies for our definition of efficient. Ignoring all the math, the point is that we were able to repeatedly use an efficient decider to search for the solution of a jigsaw puzzle in polynomial time. We showed that deciding and solving jigsaw puzzles were essentially equivalent 
but this actually holds true for all NP-complete problems. We know that all NP-complete problems are fundamentally the same, which means we can convert between them. So, if we really wanted to, we can convert an arbitrary NP-complete problem into a jigsaw puzzle, use the decider for the jigsaw puzzle, and go back to the NP-complete problem. This repeated conversion is likely needlessly complex, but should allow us to stay in polynomial time. While searching for a solution and figuring out if a problem is solvable or similar, they aren't always the same. There may be some problems that have easy decision variants but are difficult to actually solve. However, they're similar enough that we can start by conceptualizing searching for an answer. On the other hand, the yes-no nature of decision problems can make them easier to deal with once you get used to them. Like a lot of computer science, it keeps things simple by focusing on a strict binary response.